Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have an example that's perhaps a little bit more challenging because here we are dealing with a kind of a parabola, a parabolic curve where x equals ky squared. So it looks like we may have to integrate through that top portion of the load distribution. The bottom portion is simply rectangular. That would be easy to do. Let's go ahead and start at least go as far as we can with the rectangular portion of the load distribution. The beam, oh, I didn't mention that, the beam is 6 meters long. What we're trying to do here is find the moment caused by the total load distribution and see where the moment acts. We want to find the x-coordinate of the centroid of the total load. We want to know the total force acting through that centroid. On the rectangular portion, the force contribution would be 300 newtons per meter over a distance of 6 meters. That's a total of 1,800 newtons. And then the x-coordinate, the center would be at the halfway point at the point equals to 3 meters. But how do we find the force contribution of that top portion right here? Well, we can do an integral. We can take a small little dA. The dA is equal to the height, which would be equal to y times the width, which is equal to a dx. The equation described in the curve is x equals k times y squared. What we can do is we can assume that the bottom portion of that curve is at zero and the top portion of the curve is at 500 newtons per meter. We simply remove that, that rectangular portion when we consider the area of that particular portion of the uh, load. To find k, we can say that k is equal to x divided by y squared. If we go to this point right up here, the x would be 6 meters and the y would be 500 newtons per meter. That is equal to 6 divided by 500 squared. That would be the value for k. Our equation then becomes x is equal to 6 divided by 500 squared times y squared. We now go ahead and find the total error by using the integral where the area is equal to the integral of dA which is equal to the integral of y dx and y can be written as oh we don't have that yet let's do that over here we can say that y squared is equal to 500 squared divided by 6 times x simply putting the 500 square up there and 6 down here and then finally taking the square root y is equal to 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the one-half power. So we'll replace y by this part of the equation in our integral right here. And so the area can be calculated when I integrate from 0 to 6 of y, y being 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the one-half power times dx. So now we have the integral that gives us the area which in this case will be equivalent to the force contribution of this part of the load. Integrating that, we get A is equal to 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the 3 halves power divided by 3 over 2, evaluated from 0 to 6. This can be written as A is equal to 2 thirds times 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the 3 halves power, and when we substitute 6 in there, we get 6 times the square root of 6, because 6 to the 3 halves power is 6 times the square root of 6. The reason I write it that way, of course, is you can see that this square root of 6 cancels out that square root of 6. This 3 cancels out that 6. That becomes a 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 500 is equal to 2,000. And that, of course, is in newtons. So the force contribution of the curved portion of the load is equal to 2,000 newtons. Now we need to find the x-coordinate of the centroid of that portion. Again, to find the x-coordinate, we find the total moment divided by the total force. We already found the total force. We haven't found the total moment yet. To do that, to find the moment that is equal to the integral of the x-coordinate Oh, I don't need to sub i because there's only one unit there. So there's only one form of the equation. The x-coordinate of the, of the top portion of the load distribution times the dA. 
Remember that the dA was equal to this quantity right here. We have y dx, and y is equal to 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the 1 half power. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 6 of x times 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the 1 half dx, which, if we want to integrate that, the moment is equal to 500 divided by the square root of 6 times the integral of x to the 3 halves power from 0 to 6 times dx. If we integrate that, this is equal to 500 divided by the square root of 6 times x to the 5 halves over 5 over 2, evaluate from 0 to 6, which is equal to 2 over 5 times 500 divided by the square root of 6. If we plug in 6 in here, we get 6 squared times the square root of 6. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. We don't have to worry about that. Again, the square root of 6 comes out with the square root of 6. And for that, I think I will need my calculator. We get 36 times 500 times 2 divided by 5 equals the total moment caused by that is 7,200 newton meters. To find the x-coordinate, it is equal to the moment divided by the total force. The moment is 7,200. The force we found to be 2,000, and that would be equal to 3.6 meters. 3.6 meters from the left is the centroid of the top portion of the load distribution, which goes in here. Now that we have that, we can find the total moment of the whole load distribution. We already have this portion to be 7,200 newtons. We add to that 1,800 times 3, that's 5,400. 5,400 added to 7,200 is 12,600 newton meters. Quick check, 3 times this is 5,400. This times this is 7,200, that is 10, uh, 5, 4 plus 2. Yep, that is correct. Just want to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. The total force is the sum of these two. That would be 3,800 newtons. And to find the x coordinate, the centroid of the entire load distribution, we divide this total moment by the total force, 12,600 divided by 3,800 equals, and we get 3.316 meters. That being the x coordinate of the centroid of the entire load distribution and 3,800 newtons being the entire force of that load. 3.316 is just past the halfway point, right about here, and the total force acting at that point, force total equals 3,800 newtons, and that acts at a distance of x equals 3.316 meters from the left part of the beam. And that's how we find the total force, the moment, and the x-coordinate of the centroid. And that's how it's done.